Hello, we are looking at Dream Echoes by E.L. Lancaster. I'm gonna play the piece for you and then we'll have a short discussion to help you learn this piece even faster. Beautiful, isn't it? I don't think I've met a student yet who didn't like this piece. <laughs> I've taught class piano many times, and as this is one of the uh, pieces in the Alfred's Group Piano for Adults book, uh, we do it lots in this first and second semester, and um, I just found that it's so pleasing to many people. So let's dive in. What can we do about this piece to help you learn it, to grasp all the details? A little faster so we want to first of all just locate hand position so a lot of this has to do as you can see on the overhead camera about where the hand positions should go if you can lock those in pretty quickly then that will help you get the entire piece a lot better understood so here we go on the beginning measures we have <clears throat> intervals of a fifth so right hand and left hand we're doing G and then the fifth above D Okay, so that's the, uh, let's say the odd numbered measure, so measure one and measure three. Then measures two and four, you stay in that position, so I'll come back to that in just a moment. Measure five, we move down, so it was the G position, now it's E position, we have an E, B, there's your E5. Measure seven, again, same position, doesn't move. Measure nine, the left hand moves down to a bass C here, an octave below the middle of the piano. And then right hand, you're gonna tuck in on A5. So C, G, A plus the fifth, E. So in this case, the hands are not matching where we have C, G, C, G, like we saw on the upper two lines, but we have the thumbs are side by side. So I just wanna make sure that's clear. That will remain the same for measure 11. Measure 17, I'm gonna jump just a little bit. There's a reason. If you look across the page, measure 17, is the identical same line as measure one, that first line. If you follow along measure five, the second line on the second page, starting at measure 21, wait a minute, those are familiar friends. So you kind of buy one, get one free. So if you're thinking, oh, this is a two page song, it's a little overwhelming, don't worry. You've got half of this piece is simply a repeat of what's already been done. When you get to measure nine, okay, so it looks like measure nine and measure 25, yes, they repeat. Okay, so I take it back. Not half, three quarters of this piece repeats. So what is different note wise? Okay, so looking at the bottom line of page one, which is starting at measure 13 and measure 29, those are different parts there. So we'll talk about those. Before I do that, just a reminder, if you're brand new getting started on this piece, I would pause the video here and then I'd go back and work through those hand positions that I talked to you about. So what does that mean? Just locating, where is it on the piano? We go down two steps here, we go up a step here, and knowing where those are, that will help you gain speed and also confidence as you play through this. And then as you go on to the even numbered measures, I said I'd come back, here I am. So at measure two, we finish this first measure, then we just stay in that position, right hand, C, D, B, D, down there, and then, like that. So you notice that all the notes are within that five finger pattern in both hands. Measure five, E position, and then right hand continues. Four, five, three, five, four, five. So I think once you get the position sorted out, you're not moving outside of that five finger set. So both hands can be confident on doing the even numbered measures. Now on to measure 13 the bottom of this first page it looks a little overwhelming when you see those notes blow on the bass clef way up on the treble staff it's like whoa this just seems overwhelming so there's good news for us on measure 13 14 and 15 every note yes every note is named d 
and A. So our biggest concern here is not what are the names of the notes, but can we locate where they are, lo are on the piano? So if you look with me on measure 13 at the camera here, you'll see that the bass clef, one, to three Ds down from the middle of the piano. So that's where we are. We notice that the left hand is on that ledger line underneath there, that space below the first ledger line. So it's D, A. And then this is a little interesting right hand on measure 13. So if you're looking at your score, you'll see that it says it's in the bass club. These notes are right written in the bass club. The stems are pointing up and you'll also see those tiny letters R, H. So that means that the right hand is gonna play down here even though it's in the bass clef. So again, measure 13, right hand an octave higher, left hand you're going to cross over, that's right, cross over the right hand and go to middle D. You see that the stems are pointing down on measure 14 and there's an LH, so that's left hand. Right hand you swoop under and go up another octave. Then measure 15 you just repeat that middle D and treble D position. So you do measure 14 and 15, those are exactly the same. The whole set from 13 to 15. Repeat that measure and finish off G, A, F sharp. So you notice that I'm also slowing down, purposefully slowing down. So at measure 15, and some of you may be going, oh, that would be great if we could take it a little slower. There's a retardando. So you're gonna be getting softer, as you see by the decrescendo sign, and also slower. So this is what some of my students like to call a fake ending. It sounds like, oh, it's over. Was well, really the ending of this first section. Okay, so we'll do that at the end here of measure 16. There's a fermata. The fermata, um, some people say it looks like a little bird's eye or just any eye peeking at you. It's that curvy line with the polka dot underneath. So that's the fermata. I like to hold it longer. Fermata means hold longer than the given note value. So let's say in this case, it is a half note. So I've even heard it say, let's do twice as long just to make sure it's a good long hold there and you don't chop it off too early. So if you'd have one, two, three, four, hold, hold like that. Okay, so that gives you the conclusion of that A section. I do like to say that when you finish the end of the A section, just enjoy that moment. It's gorgeous up here. One, two, three, four, I release both hands and the pedal, and then we restart. So it's okay to have a little bit of time. Uh, it's like that chapter, when you get to the end of the chapter and you start a new one, usually it's a different thing happening in the new chapter. You have a different scene, a different set of characters, something else is moving forward. So it's okay musically, we're also creating the story to breathe a little bit. Now I'm gonna go over to the uh, pair of measures that are matching, I should say the line, but measure 29 at the end of the second page. So it's gonna be very similar. Instead of using the notes D and A, we'll find measure 29, 30, those two measures are gonna be spelling G and D. Again, where are these G's and D's? So we're looking on the first line, the bottom line of the bass clef. So this is an octave below middle G. That's your starting point, fifth finger. Noticing we're using that five finger position again. Right hand, you tuck in right there in the middle of the piano. These bass clef notes, but the stems are pointed up. Left hand, you'll cross over into the treble clef, G, D. Right hand, an octave higher. The last two measures, those notes are C, D, B, D, G, and then we're gonna cross the left hand over for that octave higher, and there's that fermata, so we'll hold it a good long time there. All right, the whole line then. Slowing down and softer. One, two, three, four and release. Okay, so it is a gorgeous piece. That gets you through all the main positions and where that goes. We also talked about the fermata rhythm and the retardando. We covered a lot. So what's left? Well, the name of this piece is called Dream Echoes. So when you heard it the first time and I played all the way through, I hope that you heard there's an echo. So if you look on your score, measure one and measure three, measure five and measure seven. And so you see that you have this mezzo forte and then mezzo piano. So that should be the echo. You want to hear the echo. If the echo isn't audible, 
then it's a pretty song, a pretty piece, excuse me, but it doesn't really do what the title says it should. So you have to have that echo effect. There we go. One of my notes didn't sound. Okay, so make sure that as you're playing, you hear that. If you're not sure if you're getting it as well as you think you could, play it back. If you've got a smartphone, iPad, whatever you can do as a recording device, that is always helpful. Kind of play back and get instant feedback on what you're doing. Okay, and then let's see what else. The pedal is a big issue, of course. So I wanted to point out here that there's a very specific pedaling pattern. So for those of you that like to kind of know it's gonna be the same this way and the same this way, the composer has you all figured out. I'm one of those people, I like everything neat and tidy. So here on measures one through two, you're gonna have just a push down of the pedal. You see the uptick there, and then the pedal is gonna hold down all the way through measure three. So basically on the first three lines of each page, you have uh, the pedal is clearly marked and we'll say, um, well, let me take that back. So the first two lines on each page, if I said three, I meant two. So the first, so you'll play two measures and then change the pedal. So when you see that little uptick like that in the score here at measure three, underneath measure seven, measure, 18 measure or excuse me measure 17 measure 19 that's where the pedal releases you notice though that it's not a hard stop so you're going to have your heel is going to sit on the ground i'm pretending this is my foot heel sits on the ground and the toe pushes so you push down release and go right back down so we don't want to stop the pedal and lift the foot away from the pedal entirely make sure as you're playing the pedal that the heel always stays anchored to the floor if the heel is moving then the whole leg has to move and that's just really awkward if you're watching somebody pedal and the whole leg is moving oh my goodness that's a that's a good workout for the thighs <laughs> sure it's a great workout but we don't need that sort of workout for piatas so your heel is going to stay on the floor and you push with the toes mostly it's that big toe on the foot there it usually does most of the pushing so make sure that you don't choke the pedal we talk about in cars and driving choking the gas pedal and pushing down too hard. You don't want to do that on piano either. So that bell part, the round part of the pedal where it kind of bells out, flares out, that's where the toes should go and push down. That gives you the best control of the pedal. The farther the foot goes onto the pedal, the harder it is to control. So we don't want to do that. We want to have an easy access to that pedal. So you'll play here at measure one. <clears throat> pedal comes right after the hand. So play, pedal, Play the note G of the next measure, pedal. Measure five, play the E, pedal. Hold it, hold it, play, pedal. You notice I'm not doing dynamics, I'm just working on the pedaling. Measure nine, Pe play, pedal. And this time at measure 10, we'll play and pedal again. So we're pedaling every measure. Play, pedal, play, pedal. So we'll actually function the same way on page two where it's those same notes repeated again, the same measures and also the same pedaling. So what I'm showing you is called syncopated pedaling. You notice I'm saying play the note, then the pedal. So it's like play, pedal, play, pedal. So it's not a huge hold or delay between those two. Play, <gasps> pedal. That's too slow, right? That wouldn't work very well. So we need play, pedal, play, pedal. So that's why I worked through all of those three lines very slowly, just working on pedal. So if you're not very comfortable with pedaling, I would say just focus on the playing and the pedaling and don't worry about the dynamics. You can take it as slow as you'd like as you're learning this skill. The good news is measure 13, that last line on each page and measure 29, you actually are just gonna hold the pedal down for the entire line. Whew, that's nice. Well, mostly it's because we're not changing note names. We're staying in that pattern and not really shifting. So it's very, very nice when you play measure 13, play the D, push the pedal, and just leave it there. And that way you can focus on the hands and all the movements that's going on here. That's going on here. Pedal is still down. You release hands and pedal at the same time and restart like that. And then finally, I'll play measure 29 just so you can hear it, but yes, we'll do the pedal exactly the same way. So here we go on the Gs, hands in position, play the low G, pedal. Hold the pedal, the hands are doing all the activity here, 
Pedal stays down, do not release. And let the sound die away. Three, four, it really helps those fermata notes to have the pedal there. All right, well, I hope that you get to work on this beautiful song. You can share it with your family and friends. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Happy practicing, and I hope to see you next time on this channel.